a rub block, and clipper blades. Why? What's it for? How do you use it? What's the big deal? We're going to talk about the rub block when it comes to sharpening clipper blades. I'm Bonnie McGowan. We teach sharpening here in the Atlanta, Georgia area. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, especially if you're a sharpener or want to be sharpener. And we're going to talk about sharpening clipper blades and how to test them with a rub block. I'm here in my sharpening room training facility and this whole thing about showing how the rub block works and explaining exactly what you're looking for, it's really super hard to explain in person. So I'm going to try to break this down so you can see on the video. The whole idea of the rub block is that you're going to want to see on a clipper blade we've talked about that they're a little bit hollow and so they're rubbing this way and you're wanting to see if that rub is the right pattern and if you sharpen it wrong it'll be the wrong pattern and let me show you exactly what we're talking about we're going to zoom in here I'm going to see if you can see this this is a clipper blade that's never been sharpened and that's been used um, looks like it was originally sharpened right um, and maybe it's never been sharpened um, possibly not and I want you to see the rub pattern that's on it now just from the two blades rubbing together then it might click in your brain what you're looking for that's what I had to do with me I'm I'm not a fast learner when it comes to sharpening I, maybe that's why I enjoy teaching this so much as I have a lot of patience with you because um, I've had to have a lot of patience with myself and it was hard for me to wrap my mind around what's the whole idea that rub block it just looked like an extra step in my clipper blade sharpening that I didn't always understand what I was looking for. I had some pictures and the pictures just aren't the same as seeing the real thing. Now here's a clipper blade that I've pushed apart and I'm going to turn it back and forth in the light and you might be able to see where the blades have been rubbed, where the two have been hitting together. This is called the cutter and I'm going to turn it back and forth and can you see the little bit of a pattern there and then I'm going to turn it over so you can look at the comb and you might be able to see where the tips look like they've been rubbed and the reason only the tips are rubbed is even though this looks flat and may appear to be flat it's really not it's really kind of hollowed out so only right at the edges are rubbing and this would be the correct rub pattern you were going to get if you sharpen them correctly. Can you see that? Now these have not been rubbed on a rub block. This is the pattern you normally would get with blades that have been sharpened correctly, that are adjusted correctly, that have been used. And on this one, I'm seeing the little bit of a rub pattern. Let's try this with a red Sharpie and see what happens and see if you can see it a little bit better. It's a good practice when you're working with a rub block. Before you use it, clean it off with some rubbing alcohol. You don't want any oils from your hands or anything else or from the oils from the clipper blades. So, and try to keep this block in a better place than I keep mine. You see mine starting to tarnish. That's not best practice. A lot of these things, it's do as I say, not as I do. And this is a blade I have not sharpened. This just came off of a clipper. And it looks like it's in pretty good shape. I don't think it's ever been sharpened. So it should be the right rub pattern as it is. But just for the fun of it, and I've cleaned it off with alcohol, I'm going to color this in with my red Sharpie. And hopefully you'll be able to see this pattern and I want to color in that whole section and I want to give it a minute to dry so now I want to do the rub and the way you rub is different than the way you do a ride line on a shear on a shear if I was doing a ride line if you remember I'm pushing straight down like this when I'm doing the rub block I'm pushing down but it's a flat I want that whole surface to be flat if I'm pushing down like this, I can give myself a false reading. 
So I'm laying my hand straight, flat, and I'm kind of putting even pressure on all these fingers. And I can do like a figure eight. So can you see I've got kind of a little bit of a, a arched pattern? That's going to be the way you're going to see most of your clipper blades, the little rub. It'll either be straight across or it'll be a little bit of an arch or an arch up. You don't want too much of an arch and you don't want it skewed to one side. Let's clean this off with alcohol and see if you can see what's going on. And this one looks like one that's been sharpened. Um, I don't know the whole story on this one, but it looks like it has been sharpened and probably sharpened correctly. I'm not seeing anything that looks out of place. So let's take this one apart and see what's going on with this one. Clean this off, clean this off. Rub it with alcohol, rub it with alcohol, no oil, no fingerprints on it. I want to have about one pound of pressure. So I'm laying it on here, up and down, figure eight, round and round. It doesn't have to be any exact pattern, but you, you want to have like even pressure to be able to really tell what's going on. This one has quite a deep curve to it. You see that? Probably when it was sharpened, it was too far. Like if this was the clipper a machine, instead of being right square, you know, straight from the center to the out, it was probably beyond that. And that's usually what causes that little um, overarching. You want to have it straight or just a slight little bit of a little bit of a curve to it. So that one would definitely be one that wouldn't cut. Let's see what the cutter was like. Let's clean it up. Now do I do every blade? No. Um, a lot of people recommend every six blades or every 12 blades. Um, I test all the blades if I can after I finish sharpening them. And if I see one that doesn't pass, then I'll do the rub block test, especially if I see a few in the row. Now see, this one's a little bit better, but do you see how it skews down to the right here? So this one... Eh, yeah, it skews more to the right. It still has an oval. It's a little bit better oval than the other one. A little bit, you can see the tips better, but it, it's it's off to the right. So probably when they took it off, they might have lifted up, um, not on this side, because this would be higher, because this is touching. They might have lifted up a little bit. When they lifted it up, lifted up a little bit here. So that one, that tells me that one's wrong. Let's keep hunting and see if we can find one that's working right. Now this is one I've wiped off with alcohol. I've cleaned my block again. This is one I found in my box. It looks fairly pristine. You see that? So I don't know the story of it. don't know who's sharpened it. don't know if it's been sharpened. It's in my box of mystery blades. But one pound of pressure, even pressure, back and forth, round and round. Try to do even between these two fingers so I'm not skewing it any. Now this one, let's see if we can see it in this light here. Can you see it's going across here? It's dipping down a little bit in the middle. So this would be the opposite of the other one. This one probably, when they were sharpened, instead of being right on the money between the center and the outside of the plate, they might have been back a little bit. But this one is close enough that may still cut. Interesting, these rub patterns, aren't they? They can kind of mesmerize you. But you, you see what we're looking at here? I want a straight across burnishing or rub pattern. And this is something that um, if you're getting help on your sharpening on the phone, they're going to ask you about your rub pattern. Uh, and so you need to know how to do this.